Hi everybody, it's Willie's American Guitars video time. Um, I just got back from a trip to London, England. You've probably seen our posts on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, check those out. Uh, but uh, we, I went to the um, a memorial for a, for an old friend who happens to be the roadie, the, the, or the tech for the Who, Clapton, George Harrison, uh, Keith Richards, uh, and just it seems everybody in England would go to Alan Rogan. And Alan and I were pretty close friends. We traded guitars back and forth quite a bit. So here I am in London, and um, I wanted to pick up a guitar from him, and I had this dilemma. I need to fly back to the States. Here's the question. Do you put it in a gig bag and just carry it on board the plane and walk confidently? Or do you uh, put it in a hard shell case. So for those of you that travel and are thinking about traveling, you got to consider that uh, not everywhere overseas sees the guitars as a thing. If you are traveling, you might consider uh, a ukulele because it you know it fits in the airline overhead constantly and all your guitar chords work. So these flukes, flat-bottomed, are pretty indestructible. I've had one. I jam it in my suitcase. I've said this before, but if you play guitar and want to travel, that's the way to go. If you're a, um, if you're going to travel with a guitar, though, uh, Telecasters and Stratocasters are good because of the way the headstock pitches in. It's kind of interesting, a detail on fenders is that they take this chunk of wood and they carve it out here. This gives you your breaking angle, where Gibson Fender would build a headstock like this. This is actually kind of carved out, and that's why Telecasters have always been so popular, because they're indestructible and easy to travel with, so if you're purposefully traveling. However, if you find yourself like I was, going overseas, it's kind of nice. I bought this. This is a really neat blue custom color 1955 Dan Electro. Note the big headstock. Note the metal strip. Um, this is the second variant. This I bought there, and I kind of like a fender. It doesn't have a steep headstock, but here I am. I chose gig bag. Now, if you're flying, um, you want to know what kind of plane you're getting on, and this is important. I know not everybody flies, and not everybody uh, flies internationally, but sometimes you might decide to come back with a guitar, and you got to decide. Hard shell case? Because if it's a hard shell case, you're not likely going to get it on board the plane. You might. It, good chance. But if you travel with a gig bag, you... Um, are going to have a much better chance of going there and getting early. If you fly first class, not a problem, always. If you fly middle class, business class, uh, comfort plus, um, yeah, you probably will. And a gig bag, I found, like in the larger planes, will fit in the overhead. In the smaller planes, not a chance. So you have to ask for the closet space. There's a little secret cubbies. I've even flown where they've put it inside the cockpit if you have a pilot who's hip, right? So I came back with this. And this was Alan Rogan's, and him and I were our old buddies. Uh, and, and you can see this is an Epiphone. But first, you see that headstock pitch? That is actually what I'm talking about. That is where your problem lies, and this is a weak point. When your headstock is back, this 17 degrees like this in a gig bag, then you got to treat this like a baby. What I did is tie this sock back there, uh, back behind the headstock. So when I put it in the gig bag, or there was some support back there. It didn't take, if I happened to drop it, it didn't take it. I also um, put inside this gig bag, A hat that I bought, oh this is actually a bag, that I put, put down there, this shopping bag I put to support it so you don't harm that. Gig bags can be easy, but they don't protect. So, But when you travel, you're going to want to protect it. So you want to put something underneath to protect that strap button. I will say I dropped it on the ground and boy the hollowness of an old guitar. Now I'm going to take my, uh, my yellow submarine socks, I know, I know I'm a geek. 
Uh, and then I took them off here, excuse me, and so I can, oh, I know I should have thought this out beforehand. This, by the way, is a 1961 Epiphone Coronet. And the Coronet is basically a Les Paul Jr. And the Coronet, you can always tell, of course, we've talked about this, the bridge that goes back, if it's cocked back at an angle like this is, it's an early one. You know it's got big frets, you know it's got a big neck, and this is probably out of tune. Wow, I just got back from London like four hours ago. This traveled 4,000 miles, and it's still in tune. A testimony to old guitars. Um, you may even want to put a piece of cardboard underneath the strings, so if the strings don't have undue pressure, I had to put this gig bag in a closet and a bunch of other people jammed in suitcases on it, and that's the thing. So, what's my point? My point is, you can get through. If you kind of know your planes, a bigger plane is much more likely. A smaller plane, like uh, I was in a Bombardier, a CJ-9000, and those are tiny planes, commuter planes, that fly in and out of Minneapolis. There's not much room. There is no room in the overhead, not a chance. I walked in confidently with a gig bag, and honestly, nobody looked at me. They didn't think twice. They said, of course. I brought in a gig bag on every plane trip, and I've always had luck. I'm told that Congress passed a rule about accommodating musicians with instruments and that it, the airlines have now accommodated musicians. A gig bag honestly is the way to go. And if it breaks, it's not my fault. But this is what we do. It's nice to have a gig bag with a waltzing handle so you can get it out. It just gives you an extra balancing point. And then you do have to support these headstock brakes. And, um, and so that's how to fly. If you got a choice, don't put it through luggage, not an old guitar. You can hand tag. I won't go into it. That's airport talk. You can hand tag. I would suggest a couple of 10s and a couple of 20s in your pocket. Some of the crew might be more accommodating if you happened to have some bribe money. I'm from Chicago, forgive me. And then um, uh, old guitars you want to treat with care. And I think if you explain to people who are just doing their job, you might have someone who's never seen a guitar before, has no idea that you want, you've got a precious instrument and that it means a lot to you and they want to be accommodating. So there, this video is all about flying with guitars. And a gig bag is your preferred method. You want to be able to, in a big plane, never a problem. Flying first class, never a problem. You have lots of miles, never a problem. But if you're flying coach, you might want to ship it and spend the money. And there you go. That's all I got for now. But check out this 1961 Epiphone Coronet. Sexy, huh?